Good evening, everyone. My name is Owen Bundock, and I'm the captain of arts here at Masnod. And we'd like to welcome you to the 2020 Arts Stedford evening. We'd like to acknowledge that it's going to be a little bit different this year. Usually I'd be making these jokes in front of about 50 to 100 people. Today I'm going to be making them in front of one person who's behind the camera who's not allowed to laugh. Let's get started. Our first performers this evening are going to be Charles and Lennon, Darcy and Kofi, and a media production by Bryn. We hope you enjoy. it up. I am going to pick it up. And if somebody sees me, it could be my dog. So 
how hell fluffy there you are. No, no. Come. Okay, okay. I've got, I've got bags. I scoop it up, ah! but it's not dead. There's holes in the skin. There's bones sticking out. There's blood everywhere. It's a bloody mess, but it's not dead. Okay, got in the bag, right? What now? What now? can't live like this. Fluffy can't live like this. But I couldn't kill it. I can't. So I throw it into the road as a car goes by. She just swerves, honks her horn, gives me crazy eyes like, what the hell man? And now the bag's in the middle of the road where no wheels go. Nobody hits it. Nobody drives over it. I'm gonna freaking do it myself, aren't I? I <laughs> Swing the bag above my head, then down on the pavement, hard. Like bam! 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 Ah! Three freaking times! It turns all soft and floppy. Dead. Why did I do that? America changed, that's what we're told. On September 11th, everything changed. If you're not American, you can't understand. The infantile, psycho babble of popular culture is grafted opportunistically onto American politics. The language of childish entitlement has become the new lethal rhetoric of global wealth and privilege. Ask the President of the United States, the first day of a war which will kill around 30,000 people. I feel good. I was in Saks Fifth Avenue the day they bombed Bag. <coughs> the day they bombed Baghdad. Isn't it wonderful, said the saleswoman. At last, we're hitting back. Yes, I replied. At the wrong people. Somebody steals your handbag. So you go kill their second cousin on the grounds they live close? Tell me, I say. Saudi Arabia is financing the Al-Qaeda. Iran, Lebanon, and Syria are known to house terrorists. North Korea is developing a nuclear weapons program. All these you ignore. No, you go to one place known to have no connection with terrorism whatsoever. Oh, crap. And then she goes, you're not American, you can't understand. 
Oh, a question then. If you're not American, you don't understand it's new dispensation, then why not you're not Chechen? Are the Chechens also now licensed? Are Basques, theatres, restaurants, public squares, are Israeli milk bars filled with women and children? Fair game on the grounds of, you don't understand! We're Palestinian, we're Chechen, we're Irish, we're Basque. If the principle of international conduct is that you can go against anyone you like on the grounds that you've been hurt by somebody else, does that apply to everyone or just America? On September 11th, America changed. Yeah, it got much, much stupider.
what a great start. We've already had a massive amount of rain this evening, from a dead dog to picking on the US. Our next performers are going to be Leo, Tyson and Declan, and Rory serenading us with a wonderful voice, with a media production by Luca. Let's see how they do. Now, listen, I wonder if you can advise me. I've been having a bit of a rough time with this clock. The tick's been keeping me up. The trouble is, I'm not all convinced it was the clock. I mean, there are a lot of things which tick in the night. Don't you find that? All sorts of uh, objects. Wish in the day you wouldn't call anything else but commonplace. They give you no trouble. But in the night, any given one of them's liable to start letting out a bit of a tick. But they're, uh, they're as quiet as mice in the daytime. So, all things being equal, this question of me saying it was the clock that woke me up, well, that could easily prove some of a false hypothesis. There you are. But you could do with this. Oh, well, isn't it funny? I've got my pyjamas on and you're fully dressed. Do you mind if I have one? Do you mind if I hold your hand? Come on, just a touch. Just a tickle. Why? No, I'll tell you why. One night, not too long ago, one night down by the docks, I was standing watching the men jibbing the boom, playing with the yarden, when a certain lady came up to me and made me a certain proposal. This lady had been searching for me for weeks, and when she eventually caught up with me, she made me this proposal that wasn't entirely out of order, and normally I would subscribe to it. The trouble was, she was falling apart with the pox, so I turned it down. Well, this lady started getting very insistent with me and started taking liberties by which I couldn't be expected to tolerate. The facts were what they were, so I clumped to one. How did I know she was diseased? I decided she was. All right, everybody, get on the freaking ground! I'm sorry, I didn't mean to shout. Could you please get on the ground? Thank you so much. Well, well, well. Looks like somebody needs a little help. Here, do you want to sit on this chair? There you go. Okay, is that, is that okay? Okay, good. We must protect the elderly! Now, we can do this. Oh, Jesus! Ooh, ooh, that looks bad. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, here, here, here. Here, there we go. There, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Now, where were we? I'm sorry, I just ruined everything. Here, um, I'll calm him. Can you hold this? Thank you. Now. Shh, shh, it's okay, it's okay. Where's the manager? There you are. Come here. Now, I want you to put ugh, all the money in the bag. Well, hurry up then. Oh, sorry, it's been a rough day. I didn't mean to shout. I'll pack it for you. Can you hold this? Thank you. Thank you. Now, now, now. Your baby's an angel. Well, we have a funny guy. What, do you think this is... What are you looking at, huh? Do you want to dance? <sighs> We've got a joker here. Wait, you think this is a joke? 
looks like someone needs to be taught a lesson. Now, if I have one coin and then another coin appears behind a little boy's ear, how many coins do I have? What? No. No, 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 no. No, sorry, no, no, I'm not your father. I will never be your dad, and do not refer to me as such. All right, everybody. If any of you tell anyone about this, I'll, I'll, I'll murder your family. It's trash. It's completely trash. I mean, this town, nothing amazing, nothing interesting, nothing even terrible happens here. There are a lot of people, they walk around like they can barely lift their feet off the ground, or that they're monged out most of the time. This town is so small. It's minuscule, like it doesn't even have a Pizza Express. Because, well, I mean, how can I live my whole life somewhere that doesn't even have a Pizza Express? I can't. Everyone that lives here, they think it's the centre of the... But it's not. If they dropped a big nuclear bomb on it tomorrow, then the world would miss us for like two days. But it's not like they couldn't go on anymore, could they? It's not like the whole world couldn't go on without this small town. But after a while, all the people in this town, they just be memories in other people's heads. And then when they die, we'll just be a bunch of people in photos that no one recognises. <sighs> There's a grief that can't be spoken there's a pain goes on and on Empty chairs at empty tables Now my friends are dead and gone Here they talked of revolution Here it was they lit the flame Here they sang about tomorrow and tomorrow never came 
from the table in the corner they could see a world reborn and they rose with voices ringing and I can hear them now the very words that they had sung On the lonely barricade at dawn Oh my friends, my friends, forgive me That I live and you are gone There's a grief that can't be spoken There's a pain goes on and on Phantom faces at the windows Phantom shadows on the floor Empty chairs at empty tables Where my friends will sing no more Oh my friends, my friends Don't ask me what your sacrifice was for Empty chairs at empty tables Where my friends will meet No I'm so proud. The others were fine too. Coming up next, we've got Luke, Ben and Tom with a media production by Elliot. Let's take a look. Have I bought Joe? Is that what you said? Have I bought Joe? Is that what you thought I'd do? Bring him halfway around the world to see a woman who might not even be his mother? Yeah, make him take malaria pills. Make him sit on a plane for hours and hours. No, I haven't bought him. Funnily enough, He's with my mum. Do you know how old my mum is? She's 65 years old. She shouldn't be looking after a five-year-old, taking him to school, collecting him. She shouldn't be giving him his tea, bathing him. Bathing him while his dad gets left with a TV dinner. Well, aren't you gonna say something? Have you any idea what you've done to us? What you've done to Joe? He's lost his mum, hasn't he? He doesn't understand any of this. And well, what am I supposed to say? Because I don't understand it either. I don't believe this. What's going on, Jane? What's going on? I've had it with this. I've really had it with this. I tell you, I'd rather have found you dead. I'd rather be identifying your body in some morgue, in some mortuary, than have you standing here like this. Are you seeing someone else? Is that what this is? Him, is it? Jungle Book Boy. You were pregnant and you had an abortion. She didn't say it, but she thought it. You were pregnant and you had an abortion because you couldn't be bothered raising another... Because if you did that, if you did that because... 
that would have been another brother or sister to Joe. Well, what's this then? A baby in a bag? What's that? Don't. Oh, don't? Don't what? Don't what? You stupid, stupid, selfish cow. I have eyes that can see straight through, through wood and the... God, why does no one appreciate the artist's block? For God's sake, I tried to make something expressive here. Of course, art work being expressive is a myth now with all the oppressive middle class citizens. I could barely make enough to buy weed, let alone pay rent. Knowing that I fall to... Ow. Oh, that's been my back, didn't it? Stupid ledge. Stupid fall. Fall. Fall? Um. Free falling through the fog and the not falling. Who on earth likes falling? No one. No one likes falling. I really wanted to write about it myself. And of course, my friends already knew I hated heights. Experiencing it will help you write. You'll understand it better. What a load of crap. If I didn't know any better, they were hoping that something would happen. Oh. Right. I can't do that anymore. Was I doing something wrong? Did my friends just hate me? I thought I was really trying to make something artwork. For God's sake, I sat up there to try and inspire my mind. Maybe that's why at the peak I wasn't aware. Maybe if I hadn't thought of falling, I wouldn't be here. Maybe if I wasn't here, I'd be finishing that song. Flying is a lot like falling, actually. The air is rushing by you. You feel like you're completely weightless. Birds have it good. That'd be a good song title, actually. Birds have it good. Do, do, do. Mm. 
But I guess falling implies that there's something below you. The stupid ledge made sure of that. I hit my back on that stupid rock. Now the only thing that's left in this world that is mine is that stupid unfinished piece of crap. Maybe that song should be left unfinished. Then I don't have to worry about it being good or not. That's a nice thought. And then one day, one day, someone who's better than me can find it and make it good. Of course, I won't be able to see it, but I'm sure it'll be nice. I just hope that it doesn't have anything to do with falling in it. What a great act one. We're going to take a small intermission now, about 15 minutes. Stick around if you want to see the Mr. Squiggle competition where Kofi, Luke and Jackson are going to battle it out to win for the best squiggle. Take this time to also refill your drinks and food and we'll see you on the other side.
It's coming round again The slowly creeping hand Of time and its command Soon enough it comes And settles in its place It's pressure on my face Undignified and lame This life, well it's slipping right through my hands These days turned out nothing like I had planned It's coming round again The slowly creeping hand of time and its command It settles in its place A shadow on my face Pressure on my day Soon enough it comes Here it is again Slowly creeping hand Of time and its command Soon enough it comes, settles in its place, a shadow on my face, undignified and lame. This life, well, it's slipping right through. Soon enough it comes Oh, soon enough it comes To tie us down Ooh, it's coming round again Have you ever seen a dead body? I, I saw a dead body once. It was years ago, back when I was young, right? So I'm out playing in these fields and there's this pipe that goes across this stream and you can stand on it. Oh, it's really big. It's massive. Well, I'm sat up on the pipe and I'm looking in the pond because people chuck random stuff in there or animals or cars and it's interesting but sometimes it's just rubbish. Well, I'm looking in the pond and I see this thing floating in the water and it's a dummy from like a shop. 
And I think to myself, oh look, someone's throwing a dummy in here. But then there's this moment, right? Really radical, where you're looking at something and it's one thing and you're still looking at it and it's something totally different. Same, different, same, different. You with me? So one minute, I'm looking at this dummy from like a shop and the next, it's a woman, a real woman, a real dead woman. And well, it's freaky because like, I know she's dead just like in a film, but it's not a film. But it's also like a film because everything's just a bit slow motion -y. It's like I'm a camera and I'm zooming in and out on this dead woman. Like I can get close up and then far away. I can zoom in and out. And I can go oop and away. It's cool. It's like the whole thing's my own personal film in my head. It's like I can freeze it. And then I can go oop and away. So cool. Well, not for her. It wasn't cool for her or anything. Because she's dead. Obviously. That's not right. It would be sick though. Such extreme stuff. Awesome. <sighs> I'm already sick of that guy. For the start of Act 2, we're going to have Jen, Travis, Lennon and Marcus with a media production by Harrison. Let's see how they do.
She made a choice. You look like crap. So where's the apology? She doesn't want to be happy. Depressives don't. They want to be unhappy to confirm that they're depressed. If they were happy, they couldn't be depressed anymore. And they have to go out to the real world and live, which can be depressing. <laughs> you don't love Anna. You love yourself. Yeah, you do. And you know something? You're winning, you selfish people. It's your world. Nice, isn't it? Oh, I have forgiven her. With that forgiveness, we're savages. You're drowning. Look, to a towering romantic hero like you, I don't doubt that I'm somewhat common. But I am nevertheless what she's chosen. And we must respect what the woman wants. So if you go near her again, I promise, I will kill you. Okay. I have patience to see. I didn't date her to give her a nice time. I dated her to screw you up. A good fight's never clean. You ever seen a human heart? It looks like a fist wrapped in blood. So get over yourself. You writer, you liar. Go check a few facts while I get my hands dirty. Listen, I've spent all week talking about you. Anna tells me you kissed her with your eyes closed. She tells me you wake up in the night crying for your dead mother. Your mummy's boy. Shall we stop this? It's over. Accept it. You don't understand the first thing about love because you don't understand compromise. You don't even know. Alice. Take her scar. A scar in the shape of a question mark. Solve the mystery. Now, it may seem to you that this is unfair. You're quite right, it is unfair. But let me tell you something about fair. You know nothing about it, nothing, zero. Because I've had to sit here for the past six hours and watch you dissemble a lie in an altogether humorous and unentertaining manner. And that, to be quite open and honest, is unfair. I've had to sit here while you tell me a quite embellic and stupid lie about how you conveniently own a BMW, which you have conveniently misplaced the purchase receipt and all evidence of its existence in the universe. And in that BMW, in the glove box, you forgot about the existence of 10,000 pounds worth of jewelry, for which you have also had to misplace the purchase receipt. Now, not only have the last six hours of my life left me bored, merciless, and drained from all faith in the human species, but then you have decided to abuse me and insult me when I dare ask a couple of questions about why you left the key to your allegedly stolen BMW inside of it with the doors open in the middle of a car park and went shopping. And it may seem unfair to you that before I placed 102,705 pounds in your account, which is more than I earn in a year, I presume to know a little more information about the alleged theft. Now, I know, I know, government benefits for a disability allowance and carers' benefits do add up, but surely it can't surprise you how I might question how someone could be so blasé about the Tower of London-like stockpile of jewels they claim to own, considering their current financial circumstances. I am not worked up. I am perfectly calm. Allow me to give you a diamond of truth. You and your kind lead me to believe that a leech 
sucking the blood from my testicles is more worthy in existence than you. And your plea to fairness is nothing more than a self-induced fantasy. Well, guess what? For most of the seven billion people on Earth, life doesn't get close to being fair. And despite what your pregnant girlfriend tells you, committing a insurance fraud and abusing a person who's just trying to help is not going to make it any better! And that, Mr. Collins, is why Chives Insurance cannot possibly determine your insurance claim. Great to see a Year 7 putting himself out there and joining the Arts of Stedford this year, much like I did when I was in Year 7 and won it, but enough about me. Our next performers are Carl, Will and Jevon with a special performance from one of the greatest actors I've ever known. Enjoy.
I used to boast a healthy hair of head. Why no hat could contain it? Cancer of the scalp. It just fell out. My barber, he took a snap of it, had it planted right at the front of his shop, next to the hair tonics. A Harry, oh, oh. <coughs> Damn adenoids. And cataracts. Jesus, they've solidified the compo set. No crystal? Oh, rotten weather like this? A victim to the elements? What a way to expire. Defunct. <laughs> Useless. <laughs> What's this? A rise in the plaited meat? This loosingness ascends? Agile again? Sorry I'm late, Dennis. I, I haven't been... My wife... Yes, I um, guess she does have a peach of an ass. Thank you. She'll be thrilled that you've noticed. <sighs> Listen, I just wanted to talk to you about your recommendations on the Couts claim. Now, I was thinking... Denied. You don't think that... Chives has an opportunity here to put a flag on the moon, to, so to speak, to say, I don't care, I believe these people. Think of the publicity you'd get. Because correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis, but Chives hasn't enjoyed much goodwill recently, has it? It's exhausting finding new and inventive ways to say no. You know, this reminds me. I ran into Alfred and Beryl Jones downstairs. Well, Alfred and Beryl, homeless Jones, as they're now known. Apparently they couldn't de-evolve back into amphibians fast enough to inhabit their underwater flat. Ah, oh, stupid senile old geriatrics. Probably didn't read the fine print. It's probably for the best though. Marine life's not too smart around here. What with you and your friends, chucking your mining sediment, cigar butts, and dignity overboard. What's wrong, Dennis? You're looking all fidgety. Is your ulcer playing up? 
you should call your wife. She could pop her Prada handbag down and come on, massage your little ego, make the little lady feel valuable. I imagine that she had hope before she met you. Beautiful aspirations. Maybe her smile wasn't Botoxed on. I imagine it is that same resilience that keeps the shotgun out of her mouth. <sighs> Don't look so shocked, Dennis. You taught me everything that I know. God knows where you got it from, although I did notice that your two o'clock is Mephistopheles. <sighs> no, no, no. I'm not here to ask for a raise, Dennis. In the entire universe, there is not enough compensation for the self-loathing that I felt working here. No, 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 no. I just came here to tell you that I'm beginning to think that me and Chives aren't gonna work like tuck shop ladies and threadworm. Well, I guess that's me. Off I go. I hope that you have a wonderful day. And you know what? I left a tin of Milo in the tear room for you. You're welcome.
I told you he was good, didn't I? The final performers for the evening before we get to the judges' adjudication are Flynn, Lockie, Jonathan, and Jackson. Let's take a look. Darkness. Total and complete darkness. Oceanic darkness. Like being at the bottom of a lake, stuck fast in the mud and sinking. Trying to breathe. Trying to decide if I'm alive or dead. Try telling myself it's a dream and will myself to wake up and see, and see my bedside table, my yellow lamp, Floral sheets, comforting. No, then I tell myself I'm drowning because I know that feeling, drowning, this being crushed, lungs being crushed, collapsing, no air, stuck fast in the mud and drowning. Before there was a woman beside me, bright colored clothes, baby strapped to her chest, smiling, happy, made me smile without meaning to. And by the door, there was a girl with bright red hair and her face was covered in freckles and her skin, it was like porcelain, pale, translucent. In that heat, everything seemed that bit more intense and colorful and I smiled at this girl and she smiled back and suddenly this city didn't feel like a city. It felt like we all wanted the same things in the end. It was good and warm, then darkness. Metal scraping, collapsing, bus seats buckling and people screaming. My eyes closing and not reopening. Things heaving, breaking, bones. No, yes, bones. I curl in a ball and pray. Please, God, get me out of here. Please, God, please. The weather's turning against us, Gabrielle. It shouldn't be snowing in Adelaide. There's not one day that I don't regret being with you. And don't say a word to contradict that because you know what I feel and I know you can't say the same. I stole you. I get that. Got you at a weak moment. You needed someone and I made sure it was me. But one thing you've got to give me credit for is my patience. I have waited 25 years for you to love me. I wish I'd never stopped the car. 
I wish I'd never stopped the car. I wish I just let you bleed to death with him. I could have made it to Kurong and met some half decent girl that would have loved me. Not the way that I have loved you. Don't say that to me. There is some woman in Salt Creek who would have known how to be loved by me. Don't tell me that you're angry. Who do you think you've been angry at for 25 years? Loyal old Joe, that's who. Like a dog, that's what I am. And why? Because I saved you? Because I never measured up to something I never even understood? I have waited 25 years. I have raised his son. I have lived with his ashes in the cupboard for 25 years. And you're wrong. I have been angry at myself every single day since I've met you. I have been angry that I've been unable to make you happy. And I'm not the only one who tried. You have made my life hell. But what's worse is you did the same to your son. It's true, Gabrielle. In the end, the boy couldn't wait to leave. That's why he hasn't called for seven years.
The talent this evening has been outstanding. We're now going to throw it over to the judges, so I'm going to start practicing my winning face. Drum roll, please. Thank you for inviting me to judge this year's Art in Art Stedford at Mazenod 2020. It was a privilege to be involved again, and I was impressed by the standard of all the work. Thank you to all the students who've submitted their artwork. I really enjoyed seeing your work. There are four categories this year. The first category was the Fun Filled Quick Sharpie Challenge. Um, I'd love to see a few more boys going into the challenge next year. But for this year, I selected Kofi Chow's artwork as the winner. I thought it showed the most imagination and used a contrast of line and utilised the whole page to create his scene. Well done, Kofi. The second category is the Images of Mazenod Drawing Challenge. The drawing I chose as the winner was done by Sebastian Atkinson, which was a drawing of a student sitting on the steps. The drawing was strong and confident, and this was resembled in the pose of a student, which gave the drawing more meaning and also put the drawing into context. I liked the perspective taken from down low looking up and also the contrast in the tone, texture and light of the buildings. Well done, Sebastian, and congratulations on winning the prize. The third category was the Junior Art Prize. I thought the standard was very high this year and I found it very hard to choose first prize winner. So I'm awarding a highly commended as well. So for highly commended, I chose Oscar Utek's artwork. A very striking portrait capturing the character of the man very well in a free and expressive application. The medium used with black and white made the image very powerful and it was a confident artwork. Well done, Oscar. I was very impressed. For the junior prize in for first, I chose Jaden Richard's artwork. The drawing of the two basketball players showed a very high level of drawing skills. It was very really impressive showing accuracy, tone and resemblance. Obviously, a lot of time and dedication had gone into this artwork with outstanding results. You should be very proud of your, all your hard work, Jaden. Congratulations on first prize in the junior section. It was a very high standard. For the fourth category was the senior art prize. And I chose, if you're going through hell, keep going by Mason Hillman. The portrait successfully expresses anguish and frustration through the use of different mediums with texture and colour. I like the blurred charcoal to show the movement and the chaos of colour and flow around the frazzled hair, adding to the emotion. Well done, Mason. Hello, my name is Brooke Van Allen and I am the Drama Adjudicator for Mazenod's 2020 Arts Estetford. I look forward to coming up to this event every year and seeing what it has in store. And 2020 was no exception with Mazenod making the excellent decision uh, to hold this event online. So the entries that I've seen this year are of a wonderful standard and it's excellent to see the boys challenging themselves with monologues from a variety of contexts and both classical and contemporary pieces. And it's always wonderful to see some original solo performances in there as well, uh, which means that the boys have written the work from scratch and devised, directed and performed it on stage, which is no easy feat. So congratulations uh, to all of the pieces of work that were submitted for 2020. What I particularly enjoyed uh, was the range of characterization and also how movement and voice is being manipulated to create a range of characters and also circumstances on stage. So with that, I will be announcing the runner-up and winner of the 2020 drama section. 
Our runner-up today created a really interesting character which had a variety of emotion within his piece. There was a clear sense of who was in the room with him and um, I'd maybe be a bit concerned if I was that person in the room, um, but he really took me on a journey with his work. So with that, I congratulate Owen as the runner-up for 2020. And moving on to our first place, this particular performer um, really kept me thinking about his performance for quite a long time after I'd viewed it. Uh, he created a character that was quite sinister and dark, but had some really lovely nuance within his performance as well. And as I said, I really kept on coming back to this piece, which is always the good sign of a wonderful piece of work. So with that, I congratulate Leo as the first place for the drama category for 2020. I thank you again for letting me adjudicate your wonderful pieces of work and please keep up the good work, keep on challenging yourself with performances in class, uh, different pieces of work from different contexts and just give things a go because you never know where it's going to take you or what ideas might come to light. So with that, I wish you a wonderful evening and I look forward to seeing you in 2021. Take care. I'm back. It was such a pleasure to adjudicate this event. Uh, I know we say it every year that the talent of our students is amazing, but it's true and it's so wonderful to see everyone grow and develop and become better musicians and performers. Um, with everything they do, with every event that we have. So I'm, I'm really, really pleased to have, um, to have been able to do this. Thank you. Um, I, I, can't, I can't tell you how proud I am of all of, all of you guys, whether this is your first at Steadford, whether this is your last at Steadford. Um, you all just bring so much to what you do. The only shame about doing it like this is that you don't get to hear the crowd just go nuts at the end of your performance because that is another wonderful thing about our school is how supportive everyone is of everyone else. It was fantastic to see a, uh, a good mixture of vocals and instrumentalists, people who ha were uh, improvising in their, their piece, people who had arranged an entire piece. There's lots of things I look out for in a performance. Musicality is one of them. And, and often it's really hard for, um, for musicians or instrumentalists, should I say, to be the storytellers that vocalists are. Uh, instrumentalists don't have the luxury of text. But sometimes singers don't use that text as, as best as they can. So that's something we can always be looking to, how to make ourselves more musical and to be telling the story, whether it's an instrumental piece or not. I was really looking out for creativity um, and musicality in these performances. Um, sorry, I'm slightly interrupted here by my dog, Eddie. Can you see her? Hi, Eddie. <laughs> Yes, hello, Eddie. Sorry, and Smokey's here under the piano. Hey, Smokey. <laughs> Sorry, the joys of working from home. Anyway, back to the music and the musicianship. It was really, really strong, um, particularly in some of the um, older boys performances, and that just comes with age and experience and, and performance. It was a really close run for all the musicians. I think there was only, there was less than 10 points between, um, between all of you. So you've all done really, really well. I completely applaud people who were accompanying themselves. So well done, Aiden, that's fantastic. Um, I, I just want to say something about all of you. You're all so brilliant, but I, I don't think that's what I'm here to do. Um, 
Yeah, you've all done so well. It's wonderful to see you grow as musicians, whether that means you're taking on a new instrument that I haven't seen you play before, or whether you're working through the changes that are happening in your voice and just absolutely grabbing that and running with it. Um, so I guess it comes to who it is that I think has been the most successful performer for this event. I really was looking for creativity, musicality, uh, and this year I have um, I've awarded awarded I've, I've adjudicated um, that Will Footer is our winner for tonight. Uh, it's just amazing, Will, what you've done with this piece. You've made it your own. There's so much going on in the piece. Um, as with everyone's, everything can improve a little bit, but you guys do so well and Will, I'm really pleased to be able to um, to announce that you are our winner for the music section of of the the art, the Reimagine Arts of Stedford. Um, Tom Boisvert is our very close second. Um, I really love how he took on the uh, nuances of the pace and of the style and that's really important. I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much everyone for having me. I miss you all like crazy and I can't wait till I come back and see you all again. Night! How's it going guys? My name is Andrew Murphy and I have had the absolute pleasure of looking at the masterpieces that you guys have been working on. I've been shooting photos and videos for about 14 years now and I just absolutely love the creativity that can go into expressing a story that you want to tell. Now it was great to see how much talent and filmmaking techniques were being shown in all your films. You all absolutely nailed the music choice and created films that were in line with the theme that was given. It's awesome being able to see young creatives like yourselves going out there and learning these skills to be able to use them later in life. Now, without further ado, the runner-up is no other than Brian Overton. I love that Casey Nice, that feel that you produced in your film with an absolute ton of different camera angles to show how everyday tasks can actually be quite enjoyable to watch. And finally, the winner is... Jevon Buckland. It was clear to me that you put a lot of time and effort into actually putting it together and planning shots so then they worked well with each other. Congratulations to our winners and just remember guys that if this is something that you are really enjoying doing or that you want to pursue, then to keep putting that time and effort into upskill and learn new techniques to be able to make better films down the track. I hope to see some more films from you guys in the future, but just remember to stay creative and just be you. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'd like to thank the adjudicators, students, and all involved in making this event happen. We'd encourage you to like, share, and comment, and we hope the next year we can bring another virtual arts to Stedford. Thank you, goodbye.